Hi, Miss Smith here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about dinosaurs. We're going to be going to the Field Museum later on, and we're going to be looking at the Jurassic stuff, and Triassic stuff, and Cretaceous. But did you know that we actually have something that's related to dinosaurs living today with us? Birds! This one happens to be the peregrine falcon. Now, peregrine falcons are really cool because they are super fast. In fact, they are actually the fastest animal on the earth. All right, I know you're thinking cheetahs are the fastest animal. They are the fastest land mammal, okay? Land mammal. They are not the fastest animal on the planet. It is the peregrine falcon right there. They can go at speeds of over 200 miles an hour because they fly really, really high and then they make a dive when they see their prey. And in that dive, they can reach over 200 miles an hour. That's faster than your mom and dad are allowed to drive on the expressway. All right, so birds are relatives of the dinosaurs. And some dinosaurs we've even found out from fossil evidence are have, have had feathers, but Let's move on from there, and I'm going to show you all of the wonderful things that I have here. So, let's start with the Iguanodon skull model, okay? Gee, what was an Iguanodon? They were pretty large animals, okay? And here it is. So I'm going to be turning around, picking things up, and showing them to you. Here is an Iguanodon. And looking at this skull, I want you to think about when I show you these different things, like look at his teeth. What do you think he ate? Do you notice this? Look, at he's almost got a beak in the front there. It's almost like a beak, really. But then he's got teeth back here, and they're pretty flat and worn. And this is where his eye would be. And this is his nose. And then he's got a couple holes in the top of his head. And back here, you see that little bump there, that little round thing? That's where, that's where the spine would attach, is right there. And that's the bottom. Look at that bottom of his, his mouth was real soft. So you can feel underneath your jaw, and you have a hole there too, see? So, just like him. Pretty neat. So that's the Iguanodon. He was a plant-eating dinosaur. And he did have a beak. This is considered a beak at the front of his mouth. Scientists think Iguanodon used its beak to snap off branches and leaves, okay? And then it used those back teeth that I just showed you to grind up plants and to mush. All right, this animal had three main toes. At the end of the toe was a hoof-like claw. So think about a horse. A horse has like a hoof, all right? So it had a hoof-like claw almost. It was huge. So it had it had three toes. All right, not five. Now, guanodon skeletons um, and footprints have been found in England, Germany, Belgium, and they provide evidence. Those footprints that they found provide evidence that these iguanodons traveled in herds. What other things have we seen that travel in herds? Zebras, they travel in herds. How about wildebeest? They do too. Even um, some, some deer, they, they live in herds. So um, what would be the advantage, do you think, of the iguanodon traveling in herds? It's harder, right, for the predators to attack them if there's many of them. Now, if this guy was all by himself, It'd be a lot easier. Um, this is a small model of a skull, but it would be about the size of, you know, a young iguanodon. Iguanodon's got to be really big. Let's go on. Find the next thing we're going to talk about today. I'll put this one back. And here is my favorite. I have so many favorites, though. This is... Think about it. Think about it. What is this guy? Is he not the coolest or what? I'm not going to say his name right away. 
Are you saying it? Are you saying triceratops? If you're saying triceratops, you're right. Because what's tri mean? Tri means three. So you got one, two, three. Ceratops means horns. So tri, meaning three, ceratops, horns. He's got three horns. Now what kind, kind of an animal do you think he was? I bet you know a lot about him already. Let's see, he too has a beak. Look at that. He's got a little beak, and that was good for slicing and shearing off. Okay, but then he's got these little teeny tiny teeth. And I'll be showing you a more specific tooth later on of a triceratop tooth. They actually had um, the roots. It had two prongs for a root for each tooth, which is really unusual because most dinosaur teeth ha didn't have like two prongs for a, a, a root. They just had, it was just one straight tooth. So um, they had some pretty strong roots on their teeth and they had teeny tiny ones though. Look at how small those are. Those are really small, but that's quite a sharp little beak and quite a nose in there, huh? To be able to smell with and those eyes on each side, neat. Well, they were herbivores and herbivore eats plants, right? Um, and they were usually able to outrun their predators, but, well, no, actually, unable. Sorry, they were usually unable to, <laughs> to outrun their predators. So how do you think that they protected themselves? Those big spikes, right? And some, some paleontologists believe that they did not use spikes so much to protect themselves um, as they used them like rhinos do to like um, battle for uh, with one another. So on average, they were 25 feet long and they weighed 18,000 pounds. Whoa, 18,000 pounds? Bet you don't even weigh more than what? Some of you guys are, you guys are young. Sure don't weigh more than 100. And this guy, he weighed 18,000. Yikes. Well, there we go. We'll put our Triceratops back. Now, the next one is, I'm sure, everybody's favorite. You guys can guess. See if you can guess who this guy is. Oh, I hear everybody yelling. I hear you guys saying it. It is. It's T-Rex. It's Tyrannosaurus Rex skull. Look at that. Those big teeth. Oh, my goodness. Now, those teeth would just keep growing and growing and growing, okay? And um, kind of like shark teeth. So if you lost one, you usually grow another one. And... Um, so he has eye sockets here, and he had very good sense of smell, because this is his whole nasal cavity up in here, so he could smell really, really well. And see, he had a soft spot on the bottom of his chin, too. And let's see, what do you guys know about T-Rexes? They had large, sharp claws, right? And that helps them catch their food. The teeth helps them chomp into their food. And um, you know what? Most scientists actually haven't decided how the T-Rex ate, okay? They might have been fierce hunters actively stalking their prey and using their strong jaws. Or they might have just been scavengers, you know? Like sometimes you see seagulls, right? Seagulls are scavengers. And they'll just... Go on the beach and they'll steal your peanut butter and jelly sandwich and eat it. Or steal somebody else's fish that they caught. But they don't go and they actually, you know, get the food for themselves. So they're not sure if T-Rex didn't, did he get his own food? Or did he just kind of scavenge and find stuff and eat somebody else's catch? All right. Um, the other thing with T-Rex is, um, well... He had very good smell. I, his eyesight evidently was excellent too. 
Like sharks don't have excellent eyesight, but T-Rex definitely did. All right, let's move on to the next, the next thing. And this is really cool. Here it is. What is this? Hmm. Now this is not a skull, so it's not as easy. It's flat right here. And it's curved up here. It is an endometosaurus toe cast. So if you look at this, this is as big as my palm right here. And this would be his toe, the, just the one part of his toe. All right, just the one part of his toe. They thought when they first found this dinosaur that he was a water dwelling dinosaur. However, after further investigation, they concluded that he actually walked around on land. All right, this part of his toe would have been attached to another toe bone. All right, he had a wide tail and he was able to move easily throughout the water. Can you tell that he was able to move easily throughout the water on this cast? That it was just like, it's almost like webbed. Can you imagine it was probably webbed, see, his toes. All right, next. My next thing, copper light. I don't. Mm. No, I have that. Oh, I don't see it. That's okay. We'll move. We'll move on. It's not everybody's favorite. Okay. Here's my next thing. Look at this. Okay. This is really cool. Kind of like a little peg at the top. See how this is like, this goes in here? All right, you know what this is? Any guesses? Tooth, a claw. Hmm. You like something that wore, no. Okay, it is a tooth. It's a Camasaurus tooth cast, okay? This, now, so do you think that this was from a plant-eating or a meat-eating dinosaur? Take some guesses. It's from a plant-eating dinosaur. He had a thick, this is like a spoon-shaped tooth. And this was used to eat, eat through tough um, plant material. And these teeth worked like pruning shears, okay? So you know how your, your mom or dad might have those pruning shears? They're like scissors, okay? These worked like that. They were like scissor-like blade that overlapped each other and so they just cut through all those, all those branches and all the leaves to eat them. They would have been able to snip as much or as little of a branch or leaf as it wanted to. And how, um, and they were not, so these were not good at crushing, so they just swallowed their food whole. Now here's the interesting thing. So the, um, the dinosaurs that just swallowed their leaves whole, they needed a way to crush it. So what they would do, and I'll show you, is they would swallow rocks. So here are some of the rocks. They're all rounded. That would have been in a Camasaurus belly. Now they've even found that giraffes, oops, they've even found that giraffes will swallow rocks because they don't swap they don't chew their food either they just swallow it and so they have rocks in their belly and when it gets into their belly when that food and those leaves go into the belly the those rocks just stay in the stomach and they keep rolling and rolling and rolling and so the rocks would help with the stomach acid to break down all the leaves that they had that they had eaten Oh, you're gonna like this one. Okay, here's the next one. What do you think this is? Here's the bottom of it. Notice how it's kind of flat, but got a couple edges there. See how it's got like it's indentations here. It's curved. Whoa, what could that be? Could it be a tooth? Could it be a 
It is. You're right. It's an Allosaurus claw cast. Very good. So this belongs to an Allosaurus. Now, question is, is this Allosaurus a meat-eating or a plant-eating dinosaur? Hmm. Meat-eating. You're right. It is a meat-eating dinosaur. It was... And the Allosaurus was very much like the T-Rex, okay? It had sharp teeth, and it had really huge, sharp claws, okay? Its arms were short compared to its long legs, just like a T-Rex, all right? But um, each three-fingered hand ended in a sharp claw up to 10 inches long. Whoa, that's huge. So, let's see. Its legs, so Allosaurus was really good at, at speed and would run really fast. And, um, oh, and it had a really good hinged jaw that would open really, really, really wide. So, okay, that's an Allosaurus claw. So I had three of them on each, thing, on each hand, but evidently they're pretty dangerous. Next thing's next. Let me find him. Here he is. Here's my next little guy. There we go. Look at him. Now look at those teeth. What do you think about these teeth here? Pretty cool, huh? So they're kind of like straight and they come out. What do you think? Is this a meat eater or is this a herbivore? Is it a carnivore or herbivore? Would they eat meat or plants? Look at there's the eyes. The eyes are way back up here. He would have had pretty good vision because he's his eyes are on both sides. So he would have been able to see almost all the way around. Okay. Let's see. This was Diplocatus. All right. Diplocatus was a pretty big dinosaur. All right. And he had teeth that are shaped like small pencils, and they were located in the front of his jaws. Do you notice how he doesn't have teeth in the back of his jaws? Just in the front of his jaws. All right, he was a plant-eating dinosaur, and because of the shape and position of his teeth, scientists think that they were used like a rake, raking in leaves from the branches. The nostrils of Diplocatus we're at the top of its skull. So this is where it would breathe. It would breathe right from here. That's its nostrils. All right. Which may have helped it breathe while it was feeding. Because if you notice, it, it wouldn't be, able to be easy to take a breath in from here. So here it was able to breathe while it kept raking in the food. It had a long, flexible neck a long whip-like tail, and a very large body with huge pillar legs. Now, do you think that this was a fast-moving animal or not? And do you think that maybe it, it was in herds or it roamed by itself? It's probably in herds. That's my guess. And I think, I think it might have had to be fast so that it could get away. And it seems like it's, it, it just seems like it was probably pretty fast. Okay, let's move on to the next one. There we go. It's a Camasaurus skull. Ooh, look at this Camasaurus skull. This is so cool. Look at it. It looks like a funny car or something. Look at this thing. Oh, look at that Camasaurus skull. Now look at those teeth. What do you think about the teeth? These teeth are interesting, huh? Look at that. Ah! They don't seem to meet up very well. Hmm. Well, what do you think? Do you think it's a herbivore or a carnivore? And do you think it was big or small? What do you guys think? All right, I'll tell you. So Camasaurus teeth were shaped like little spoons, actually, because remember, we saw the Camasaurus tooth right here. This is what the Camasaurus tooth actually looked like, all right, and it had a whole bunch of them. This was, remember, a plant eater. So um, they weren't, they were, they were good for cropping, cropping food. This dinosaur had a flat elephant-like feet, all right, very flat elephant-like feet. 
Its rear legs were longer than its front legs. And you see how its eye sockets are? And the nostrils are located on top of its head. So it's like way up here where the nostrils are. All right. This originally led some scientists to believe that they were at least partially aquatic dinosaurs. So why would they think that they are partially aquatic? Having their eye sockets way up here and their nostrils way up here? Hmm. Maybe because if they were under the water, then they could still breathe up here, right? All right, but recently they've concluded that an aquatic lifestyle would have been impossible for this animal. So I wonder why it had such big eyes and it had such big nose. You know, it probably wasn't able to breathe through those that mouth and those teeth while it was so busy. So it needed, needed to breathe in a lot of air. And if it had elephant-like feet, it must have almost had an elephant-like body. And so it had to probably breathe in a lot of air in order to, you know, help that big, huge, massive body keep moving. All right, now, okay, this is another one of my favorites. This is like really, really my favorite. Okay, this is really my favorite. Look at this. What is this? What is this? Okay, look at this thing. Look at all these, like, it looks like armored plates on there. Do you see that? It's like feathers, armored plates. What is this? Now if I turn it this way, you see this flat piece here? And then goes back underneath here. Who do you think this is? This is one of my favorite things. Okay. This is, let's see. How did this go again? Went like this. It's the lower jaw cast. So this would have been the lower jaw of a hadrosaur. All right. Hadrosaur. So this was a pretty big animal, right? Because look at, I mean, if you look at this compared to Miss Smith, whoa, it's ginormous, right? And this was only its lower jaw. So there would have been an upper jaw, right? And then another on the other side, okay? So this is its jaw, and here's what its teeth look like on the inside, all right? And they'd keep growing up like this. And it that tooth is like almost one giant tooth, right? That's really flat. And so the hadrosaur, they were plant-eating dinosaurs. They were also called duckbill dinosaurs. Maybe you've heard of duckbill dinosaurs, okay? Like iguanodon. They had a beak in the front of their jaws and many rows of teeth toward the back. Just see, they didn't have teeth in the front, just in the back, in the very back. They think hadrosaurs use their beak to snap off branches or other vegetation, and then they use the back teeth to grind it up, much like you do a food grinder at home. Now this animal had three main toes, at the end of each toe was a round, hoofed-like claw again. Okay, hadrosaurs displayed a variety of crest shapes. Flatter crest could be used for pushing contests or to demonstrate strength. What might have been the purpose of different colored crests? Think about birds today. Think about the fact like cardinals. The male cardinals are always super bright red, and the females aren't. They're kind of more brown. Right? So, and then even like I was like looking at the, um, at the goldfinches today on my walk and I noticed how the male goldfinches are bright yellow and the females are just, you know, little yellow, but not so much. And that's just to like show off and be like, oh, I'm the coolest. I look so awesome. And so the males like to do that, but the females will usually sit on the nest. So they need good camouflage. So they don't want to be so flashy, like, here I am. All right? All right. So this is, like, seriously, totally awesome. One more look. Now let's move on to the next part. Here we go. All right. And this one's a little bit smaller. I'm going to take it out of a box. Let's see? Here we go. Claw, right? It's a small claw, or is that a tooth? It is. It's a claw. It's a Dinochius, Dinochius 
claw cast. Now, this was a medium sized meat eating dinosaur, okay? And it was about to 11 feet long. All right? This was so 11 feet long. Hmm. It's definitely no, not as big as a T Rex. A T Rex, I know Sue is like 40 feet long. And this guy was only 11 feet long. So that's like a quarter of the size of um, the of Sue the T-Rex. All right, now in order to preserve the sharpness of the claw on one toe, it held upright instead of walking on a, its other toes. So, so to keep these claws, you know, from getting worn down while it walked, it would actually hold its claw up. <laughs> All right. It had a thick and horny protective layer protected its claws on this dinosaur's hands and feet. It was similar to what pr um, protects birds and cat claws today. So, so this is this is kind of neat. It's kind of like on a smaller scale, right? So if we look at, you know, the Allosaurus claw to the Dinocaria, Dyna Caius claw, much different. This, one, this animal was much, much larger. But this one was much smaller. But still sharp, still curved, still scary, scary, scary claws. All right. Oh, cool. Next one. Before we put that away, what's this? No, no, it's not the Allosaurus claw. Here's the Allosaurus claw. What kind of claw is this? See, it's not quite as hooked, is it? Is it a tooth? Hmm. It's pretty big. Look at look at this thing. Wow. That's huge. Okay. And there's a little one. Wow, that's really small compared to this thing, huh? Really small. Well, this is a T-Rex claw. So whoever said that, you're right. It's a Tyrannosaurus Rex claw. Now, it was, you know, gigantic. Like I said, Sue is 40 feet long from head to tail. And, of course, she stood on two legs and used that long tail for balance. Now, the T-Rex foot is like a bird foot. It has three digits, okay, or three toes, just like all birds do. And a T-Rex's hand um, only has two. So you know that hand is like, it's not three, it's only two on that little, those little arms. All right. So why do you think T-Rex had claws on its feet? What do you think claws were used for on its feet? And how might T-Rex have used claws on its forelimbs? So did it use it the same? Did it use it different? Scientists are still wondering and discovering new things all the time. But my friend here, my peregrine falcon, he has one, two, three. Three toes, just like dinosaurs. Cool. Oh, yeah. I know some of my students know this one already. What is this? It's longer than my head. And I will give you a little clue. It has serrated edges. There's edges here that are, I don't know if you can see it. It's serrated. There's teeny tiny like little, little bumps in there. It is totally wild. So there's these serrated edges on this thing. This is a T-Rex tooth. One T-Rex tooth. Imagine how many it actually had in its mouth. This was a very scary carnivore. And like I was telling you before, this only has like one root, right? So it's just one long tooth. All right. They were good for, you know, biting things. All right. Let's see. And I think that's all I have to say about this one. It could, oh, except for, all right. Its head, a T-Rex head, was four and a half feet long, and it contained 60 teeth. 60 teeth. That's, that's just amazing. There we go. All right. And the iguanodon 
Oh, we got that already. Okay, so we did those. And so that is the end of my dinosaur thing. Um, except for, I wanted to show you a couple more things. I just want to show you a different fossil. This is not dinosaur. Um, but this was around with the dinosaurs. What do you think that this is? This looks like a rock, yes. It's now, it is now a mineral. So all fossils become minerals, okay? And they're very heavy because um, what they were, the minerals soak in, and that's how they fossilize is into a mineral. And this is agate on the back. And if you can see, shiny part, the shiny part here is quartz. And um, sometimes in this kind, you can find pearl, um, not, op sorry, opals, not pearls. Those are made by oysters. And, um, and this black part is onyx, actually. So this was a tree that was standing and probably an iguanodon was eating off of it um, and eating its leaves millions of years ago. And this part would be the bark of the tree. All right, and what they call this is a petrified um, petrified wood. So it's really cool. There's We have um, a national park in America called, um, you know, the Petrified National Forest. And it's a really amazing place to go. And basically the ground is covered in um, rocks that look just like this, petrified trees and... Um, and some are just still giant ones. If you go to the Field Museum one day, please go upstairs, look in the geology section, and you will see these. Um, you'll see one that's completely cut. It's circle. It's a big circle, and it's all cut, and it's just, it's just amazing. So this one is just the way you would find it out, out there. Um, and then that's, that's my old dinosaur thing. So I hope you enjoyed my talk. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask me. Thanks.